worldwide will be in sync with the Holy Spirit, crying out, come Lord Jesus, break in, break in. And, and he's going to come at the second coming. And before that, he's going to release a break-in of revival. Bickle, just 27 years old in 1983, had no idea he'd have a role in raising this non-stop cry to Christ. But then an elder prophet named Bob Jones, named Bob Jones, named Bob Jones, told Hundreds of thousands of Christians who have bought into the controversial renewal and revival movements, such as the Toronto Blessing or the Pensacola out Outpouring, eagerly accepted anything and everything Bob Jones had to say. Discerning Christians knew better and rejected his Jones plethora of occult visions, unbiblical teachings, and false prophecies. Soon after the Vineyard Christian Fellowship had started to work with the Kansas City Fellowship, Jones was removed from his ministry duties at the vineyard due to sexual misconduct. This misconduct did not include intercourse, but consisted of encouraging women to undress in his office so they could stand naked before the Lord in order to receive a word. Abundantly supported by fellow false prophet Rick Joyner, Jones was a major proponent of latter rain and manifest sons theology. Former Kansas City Fellowship Pastor Mike Bickle, under whose leadership the Kansas City Prophets ministered, has continued to promote Bob Jones. Bickle later found the equally controversial Interna International House of Prayer. In a video posted at IHOP's website, Bickle highlights Jones's influence on the history of IHOP. Link this video below. It's only three minutes. There's more. In Bob Jones told Bickle the Lord was going to raise up a young adult prayer and worship movement in Kansas City. He would bring thousands of young adults that were singers and musicians to Kansas City. This is in 83. I, there was no thought of this. But then over the years, Bickle and his co-pastors began to open up short-term schools of ministry and worship. Those schools began luring thousands of young people and luring thousands of young people and luring thousands of young people who also signed up to join the prayer movement. When you listen to what Bob Jones is saying and the God that he is talking about, I want you to really ask yourself, especially after I play um, some portion of scripture first, who is he talk? what God is he talking about? Because it really doesn't seem to me like the God of the Bible, and it does not seem to be aligned with scripture at all. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, I remember I was once told 
to go to Spokane, Washington and lay my hand on a pine tree. I didn't understand it. But I ministered in Seattle and they took me to Spokane and I was asking the guy, do you know anything that's particular about a pine tree? He said, yeah. There's one growing out of a grave, John G. Lakes. I said, it's really strange, but I'm told to lay my hands on that pine tree. I went up and laid hands on that pine tree and fire come on my shoulders. And at different times, even today, the fire comes in my hands and my shoulders. I couldn't understand that kind of stuff. I said, Lord, I need to understand this. He said, the roots go down into the bones. Roots go down into the bones. Into the bones. And that's what I think you're here for. To touch those anointed bones of the past. To touch those anointed bones of the past. And go forth with that resurrected power in you. There's a strange after that. A lot of prophecies come, and especially at Raven Falls in 96. And those prophecies went out, and that resurrected the John G. Healing Rooms. This is a screenshot from a video by John Collins of William Branham Historical Research about John G. Lake. You can find out more at his website. I'm just going to read this one paragraph. This response to Marius Nell's 2016 article uses primary source material to refute his claims that John G. Lake, the initiator of Pentecostalism in Southern Africa, was an upstanding man of God. A wide array of American and South American sources show that Lake invented an extensive but fictitious life story while also creating a similarly dubious divine calling that obscured his involvement in gruesome killings in America. Once in South Africa, he used invented miracles to raise funds abroad for the apostolic faith mission. Before long, he faced many accusations of duplicity from inside his own church. And that resurrected the John G. Healing Rooms. Healing Rooms. <coughs> so, I think you're here to get prepared for a total change. That's what she said. A change that if he would have told us before now, you wouldn't have believed. And I believe that's why he didn't tell us. But he gave us little clues here and there of what's going to happen. So get ready for a total change that's not in the scriptures. So years ago, he gave me a hundred year prophecy. And I imagine some of you have heard it. So, but the rest of you may not. I'm told to start it again. And it begins with the 1950s. The 1950s reveal the power of God. William Branham, William Branham, William Branham, William Branham, or Roberts, A. Allen, Jack Cole. Of course, the false prophet promoting other false prophets. William Branham? Are you kidding me? This is one way they tell you who they are. The 1960s begin with the Spirit of God. That's when the Holy Spirit began to invade the denominations and everything else. And he's still invading them today. You haven't seen anything yet. The 1970s revealed the Word of God. That's when awesome teachers rose up and began to reveal to us the truth of the written Word. And began to reveal to us the truth of the written Word. So before that, we didn't have the truth of the written Word in 2,000 years. The 1980s is when men like me, men like me, men like me began to get the anointing to prophesy. So it began to reveal the prophets of God. The 1990s began to, you hear about the government of God, about the government of God, about the government of God, about the government of God. We heard for 10 years about the government of God. The 2000 that we're in now, I was told would reveal the glory of God. I was told would, I was told would, I was told would reveal the glory of God. So I've only begun to understand what the glory of God really is recently. It's power, signs and wonders, miracles. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. It's power, signs and wonders, miracles. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. 
and he left them and departed. Its power, signs, and wonders miracled. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Its power, signs, and wonders miracled. Its power, signs, and wonders miracled. That honors the Father because His family did it. So this glory of God, we got two years yet on this. So what you're seeing is the beginning of the glory of God. 2010 will reveal the faith of God. Not the faith in God, but the faith of God. Uh, not the faith in God, but the faith of God. What Todd Pitley is. Todd Pitley is. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. <laughs> with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. BAM! <laughs> and just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell under the power of God. John is speaking, his proclamation, proclaiming. Instead of going and begging, he's coming to his daddy's table and proclaiming. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Oh. I think we act like beggars and, father, and our papa wasn't pleased with us. He set the table for us. What happened if you begin to speak things into existence? The angel of God had got their hands cuffed. The father cuffed his hands too. The father cuffed his hands too. Okay, you know what? My head just exploded listening to you. I, don't, I have no idea how to respond. He did it when he gave you all power. He did it when he gave you all power. All power. All power. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven okay, and in earth. this right here is what it all boils down to. Jesus said, all power has been given unto me. But he says, the Father gave you all power. How can they say that? This is the manifested sons of God thing. They are the corporate Christ. This is what Bill Haman was talking about. They are Christ incarnate on earth. That's what they believe. This is doctrines of demons. This is Luciferian, that they think they will be Christ on earth. That is what this is all about, and that is why this is all so messed up. He did it when he gave you all power. But when you begin to proclaim, you lose him, you lose him. You lose so many angels to go and create. This man is clearly a lunatic and possessed by the devil. He is speaking the words of Satan. Not only are you equal to Christ, but actually you're more powerful than God because you have to lose him. He's handcuffed and you can lose him to go create. This is sick. This is sick. This is sick and disgusting. This whole thing is sick and disgusting. So, I believe that you're being trained to come to that place where you have the faith of God because who you are. Okay, well, that's super new agey too. Because of who you are, you are a sinner that's either saved by grace, by the blood of Jesus, or a sinner that needs to come to repentance. But wait, there's more. Hey. And I believe this has already started with Todd and some. So it's time we begin to speak to things. I remember a time where the Lord was really put out with the pastors in Northern South Carolina. And he was put out with them because all of them was crying, pull back this influenza is killing so many people. That's all you heard was about influenza. And it hadn't peaked, it's getting worse. It's all over the United States and Canada. 
And they, I think they'd run out of vaccination and all that stuff and the hospitals and the wings and everything is full of people. And everybody was crying out, Papa, help. And I saw him and he was angry at those that were calling out to him. And he said, I want you to go and rebuke him today in this New Year conference. Because I gave them the power to do it. They're asking me something that I can't do. They're asking me something that I can't do because I've given them the power. Because I've given them the power. So I went, I shared it with Rick. We rebuked the saints there that day for not taking authority over it. So they rebuked people for calling out and crying out to God to help them. They want you to feel bad about crying out to your Father in Heaven and praying for God's help. We took authority over it that day. I never heard another person that got influenza, did you? I didn't. They were predicting dozens dying in a lot of states. And I mean, it was horrendous and it was already bad spreading. From that day, we did not hear of another death or even another case. It was totally off the news from that day. But let me just reiterate this point. We were crying out to God to stop this flu and, and he was mad enough, said, you stop it. He said, I gave you authority. The heavens are the heavens of the Lord. The earth he's given into the hands of the sons of men. That's why he won't do things on the earth until we ask, until we, and there are things that we can proclaim. We have the authority in him to proclaim. And it stopped at that day. And I know this was a precursor and a preparation yep. for this avian flu that is still on the way, the bird flu. I think we ought to get up and find out what we can do. Now what we can do. I think we've been cowards long enough. The anointing is down there in Florida. I've been around a few times. I know what kind of anointing is anointed. I don't see that Morningstar or you've got any excuse for not doing the same thing. Because that same spirit's down there is here. It's here right now. It's been here for a while. The coals come from down here and lit this same fire. These fires are being lit all over. So we're up to 2010. And when we become quieter and become waiters and waiting on that word of God that comes within, God that comes within, God that comes within, you don't ask anymore. You proclaim. It's you speak it into existence. Wicked wits cry. You untie Papa's hands. And you untie Papa's hands. And Could it be Satan? You untie Papa's hands. And he tied you untie all of his angel power. And I see angels too. And the angels that's down there are here. They're healing angels here. There's miracle work nature here and the wind of change is blowing right across here all the time. And what we need to do is begin to cooperate with them and that cooperate with them and that means turn them loose. I am the god of hellfire and I bring you fire. I send you to burn. Fire. I send you to learn. Turn them loose. If you're going to move in signs and wonders, there's a four-letter word you better get acquainted with. It's called R-I-S-K. you got to be willing to be a fool. you got to be willing to be wrong. And I'll come back to that. 2020, terror steps. God has always wanted a people that was in rest. The rest of God. I believe that... I believe that... I believe that I believe that by 2020 because of the faith of God you're going to see a church that's come into his rest <laughs> it'll be a church that's taking that risk but come into his rest and when God finds a church that is at rest in him he will rest in them and the kingdom of God will flow out of them the kingdom will come 2030s, the family of God. Papa's a family man. 
And he hates division in his family. And I believe because of that which comes into the rest will come into such an agreement that many times they won't even have to talk. They'll perceive what one another is thinking and seeing. They'll perceive what one another is thinking and seeing. The family of God. Jesus! Jesus.